Is it possible for a recreation of a classic to be a classic itself? Ponder that while we take a deeper look at the Catlin Bread Bell Epoch Deluxe. I started this channel almost a year ago because I love effects, and so many of them are designed with these fantastic features which people ignore because they don't spend the time to open the instruction book or to just sit down and explore the thing. They just plug in and go. Well, a couple months ago, I caught a really good deal on a Bell Epoch Deluxe, and it went from my mailbox to my desk to my board. It immediately caught my ear as a delay that sounds great, it's easy to dial in, and it knows how to stay in the background. What I didn't entirely realize was just how much more I could do with this pedal if I had only bothered to read the instructions or spend a little time exploring the thing. The main selling point of this pedal is that it has the exact same circuitry as the Maestro Echoplex EP3 tape delay. It's powered off a standard 9 volt adapter, but internally it runs at 22 volts. And you can see they really pulled no punches here. There's a lot of full size components, including these orange drop capacitors. What's missing from this compared with the real Echoplex, obviously, is tape and record heads. And what they've done is they've taken all the moving parts out of the machine and implemented them in this digital module. So the preamp and the signal mixing and shaping, that's all done here on the main board. The time-based portion of things gets handled on here, this little removable digital module. I suppose that in theory, someone could take an actual Echoplex apart, hook the heads up to this and the circuit board up to this and make two new Frankenplexes. It might not be that clean of a break, but that's the idea at least. And that's a neat approach. I was in a studio not too long ago and the owner was telling me that those tape delay units, they spend almost as much time getting cleaned and repaired as they do getting actual studio usage. If we think about this digital module as an analog for tape heads and tape, it's basically just a little waiting area for sound. It's like a line or a cue outside an attraction. It exists to make sure the stuff put in one end comes out the other a little bit later and in the same order. In an interview about the pedal on Reverb.com, designer Howard Gee said, since this is a digital delay line, I can do other things with it. I thought it would be a crime to not leverage that as a component. So rather than have the audio just sit there, he gave it something to do, and that's where the mode knob 
comes in. Mode one is your standard Echoplex mode and the depth knob adjusts the amount of tape warble because after a few hundred thousand trips through the rollers and the heads, tape starts to get a little bit worn down and its speed is going to meander a little bit. <laughs> Mode two is a darker, warmer analog echo mode inspired by bucket brigade delays like the Boss DM2 or more modern carbon copy and rubberneck. And in here, depth controls the amount of modulation added into the repeated notes. So kind of like that warble we just heard, but more uniform and deliberate. <laughs> Mode three is Rotoswirl, something else interesting to do with a delayed signal, modulate it like it's going through a Leslie, and I'll start it out nice and slow and then crank it up towards the end. Mode four takes those repeats and lets you run them through a resonant filter. This one has a lot of potential, I think, for taking songs and live performances in a really unique direction. Modes five and six are based on the deluxe memory man chorus and vibrato settings. So what you'll hear is an analog style delay, but with a slightly different voice than we heard before in mode two. You'll also hear a much less subtle modulation going on. And I'll keep the expression pedal plugged in and the switch in volume mode so you can hear the echo effect being brought out and then being brought back in. <laughs> Why should I care about all the work that went into the analog portion of this pedal if the delay itself happens on a digital board? Well, a lot of the magic of the Echoplex and a lot of other famous vintage analog delays isn't the chip or the tape itself, but the preamp and the signal shaping that happens along the way. And I've kind of gotten on my soapbox before about this, how a lot of times we fixate on a specific chip 
when there's so much more that's responsible for the sound of a pedal. But notice this knob right here, record level. If we picture a diagram of an effect like this with the preamp powering the record head and the record head writing out to the physical tape and then another head reading what was put onto the tape, he can start to imagine there's a big difference between increasing gain here and increasing gain here. Cranking the record level gives us more saturation, which is just another option for us to consider when building our ideal delay tone. And thankfully, the echo volume knob is right there next to it to help us keep things all balanced out. And next to that is the echo sustain knob, which controls the amount of repeats. Those three knobs are analog. They control the circuitry on the main board, so they don't change based on the mode that we're in. Something else to get used to with this pedal is that your typical starting point with a lot of sounds is with the knobs around nine to 10 o'clock, which feels weird if you're used to starting with everything straight down the middle, but that just means they've left us a lot of room to get into those wild feedback scenarios. Now, the expression pedal stuff, and this is something I hadn't really looked into before. A lot of my pedals take expression pedal input, and I'm like, cool, I can't be bothered. But I think an expression pedal is a must have with this pedal, especially with some of the modes. With this switch to the right, the expression pedal controls the delay time. This is not a tap tempo pedal. There are ways around that with something like a disaster area micro clock or the Catalan bread tap tempo switch. But one of the fun things about those Echoplex units, or at least from what I've read, was getting physical with the slider and altering the delay time in the moment. And we can definitely do that here with an expression pedal, or you can use it to switch between a short delay and a long delay on the fly. push that switch to the left, and now our pedal adjusts another set of values based on the mode that we're in. So for modes one, two, five, and six, it's the volume of the repeats. For the rotary, it's the speed, and for the filter, it's that sweep. Lastly, the second button on here sets it into self-oscillation mode. Now, just how drastically that happens is set via an adjustable internal trim pot. And if you keep your ears peeled, you just might hear some of that going on at the end of this next little jam.
I know most of us need another delay like we need another guitar or another amp or another overdrive pedal, but there really is something to the analog portion of this pedal being implemented the way it is. And the digital module is something really nice too. One thing I've got to get off my chest though, these knobs. Look at that pitch black dot on top, making it really easy to see where it's pointed. And look at the black textured ring that makes it very easy to grab and twist these knobs, even with one finger. That is how you do it. I'm looking at you and your tall nano knobs, electroharmonics. But I also have to complain about these knobs, the mode knob specifically. It's got six positions, but no detents. It turns smoothly and continuously, so it's hard to tell exactly how it's set, especially because this is a tall knob. But even if I'm directly over it, check this out. Listen for the changeover between the modes. And I don't know if that's just because the knob isn't accurate enough or maybe the screen printing is off, but it's just kind of annoying. And it led to some confusion earlier when I was trying to get into rotary mode, but I was actually still in analog mode. But human factors aside, I am loving the way this pedal sounds. I can finally see why so many people swear by it, but I also know everyone has their own favorite delays and I wanna hear about them down in the comments down there. Stay safe, keep playing, hit subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.